Hey, it's me, TB, and today I am bringing to you my TBR for the Trick or Treatathon that I am co hosting. It's happening throughout the month of October, and we have a variety of prompts for you to do for the readathon. And we are also hosting a giveaway, which I will link down below for the tweet all about that. Basically, um, you have to be following us on social, on social media and just do a TBR video, and you're basically entered into the giveaway. So since this is my TBR, I'm not going to go over in depth about any of the prompts. Um, we'll probably have like a picture of the like prompt card up here maybe, so you can like see all of them. But I'm just gonna go over like what prompt I'm hitting because each, because each of the prompts has like a set of like three ways to fulfill it. Most of them are like either read the classic that it's based off of or read a retelling of that, of that classic. There are a few exceptions, but generally speaking, most of the prompts can be completed by, you know, re by reading the book that inspired the monster. So the first prompt is Dracula, and for this, um, the prompt, the way I'm filling this is basically read a book that has gay undertones slash LGBT rep. So me and Therese, and I think Nicole, um, we're all going to be reading Lord of Eternal Night by Ben Alderson. This came out like September 4th, I think. And basically, this is like a queer vampire retelling of Beauty and the Beast, I think, something like that. Listen, I know that I trust Ben Alderson because I've liked everything else that he's written. So it's queer as vampire. It's basically made for me. So love that. Also reading like a lot of like other vampire books and queer stuff. So and if we don't get to this, which we should, um, but there are other ways for me to fulfill this with other books on my list. So I should be fine. And I know that this book has like a curse element to it. Like our main character has to like break the curse of this guy. You know, of course, romance ensues, stuff happens. So it's gonna be great. Next, Mansion of the Opera. And for this, recently, I started reading, I started listening to the Suki, Suki Stackhouse books, which is like what True Blood is based off of. So I started making my way through those. There's like a love triangle of sorts because she has like so many men, that, so many men that want to fuck her, and she's kind of like every book's kind of like based on a different guy, basically so far anyway. Right now I'm listening to like book four, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get like a good few books into the series. But the series is like long as fuck, so by the time October hits, I'll probably still be listening to the series. So that'll probably be what I, what I listen to to kind of like not read everything physically, kind of like get like an audiobook in to help help me hit up. All these prompts. Which also, I should probably say that you don't have to like complete all the prompts with separate books. You can, you can like double up and triple up or whatever to hit as many prompts as you want. So like we don't care that much, you know? So yeah, Sicky Stack House has like so many love triangles. It's kind of fucking crazy, but it's fun. So great. I'm pretty sure there's a love triangle in another book I'm reading too, so that should be fine. And if worse comes to worse, I do have I do have the Phantom of the Opera in physical, like a physical edition, so I can read that too. I probably won't because I'm reading so much for class, but I have this here just in case. And so next is Creature from the Black Lagoon. And for this, I am hitting the prompt to read a book set around the sea. And technically this isn't like a sea sea, but it's like, I'm gonna count, count it as a sea because like, you know, seas and oceans are basically the same thing. So I'm counting it. So I'm reading Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winter. I read Rage of Dragons last year, I think. This is like the sequel to that. I haven't read yet, so I need to like get on that. And I remember most like, most of the plot, so I should be fine. But I know that this is set around the sea because their country is like set around this giant like ocean place. So it is very important to the setting. So I'm counting it. It's basically in this world, there are these people that kind of like fled to this continent because their own continent was basically being you know fucked up. So they got there, and they. And like where the book one kind of like starts us off at with, with Tao and Tao sees his father getting killed and he wants revenge. So he decides to kind of like join the military to rise up in the ranks and to, you know, get training and to then kill the people that killed, that killed his dad. So book two is going to take us where book one, book one left off, where she has hit the fan and basically the world is basically falling apart pretty much. So it's going to be great. It's thick. So that's kind of why I wanted to minimize how many like physical books I'm reading. So yeah. And also technically this also fit the prompt, the other prompt for a creature from the Black Lagoon that has read a book with a cryptid or a mythical creature because there are dragons in this. So it works. So next is Frankenstein. And for that, I'm reading Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sadawi. So this is kind of like a Frankenstein retelling. We're telling him the prompt by reading a Frankenstein retelling. So great. So basically in this book, it takes place in Baghdad and 
Um, there's, there's this guy that collects body parts and, and stitches them back together because he wants the government to recognize these body parts as people so they can be properly buried. And one of the corpses in, ends up going missing and follows. And after that, a wave of murders start happening. They just to like check down this monster and deal with it. This book just does take place during it within US occupied Baghdad. So that's kind of like a setting for it. So yeah, I've owned this for like a year or two now. So I'm happy to get to it and read more translated fiction. So that would be great. Also, it's pretty short. It's like less than 300, 300 pages. So I love that for me because I could be able to read that pretty fast. It would be great. And also, can I say that I like, I love this cover because like they're like body parts, you know? And I was like, we're doing like, I guess like newspaper fragments, I guess you would call it. It's really like aesthetically pleasing and the spine is beautiful too. It's a great time. And next is the Bride of Frankenstein prompt, which technically I'm already hitting by reading a retelling of Frankenstein, so I'm good there. But I do have a book club called the Queer All Year Book Club. And for October, we are reading Beckoning Blood by Dino DeLorne. And the way Beckoning Blood fits Bride of Frankenstein is to read a book featuring an unhealthy relationship. The relationship in question in this book is between these two brothers. They're not like together together, so don't get good. So don't go in thinking, thinking that. They're like a bond is a toxic. So I'm counting that. If I remember right from the like Goodreads blurb, synopsis, whatever, these brothers are vampires and one of them is like more sadistic and kind of like fucking up the life of the other one. So that's kind of like the unhealthy relationship I'm talking about when I'm reading them for the prompt. Yeah. So next, The Invisible Man. So this one has like the prompt I'm hitting with this one is to read a book that's a character with special powers. And so technically anything on this list would count as that because like because Sookie Stackhouse has like telepathy, so that counts. I have, I have like a fantasy book coming up, so that counts too. For sure I'm gonna end up counting Sticky Stackers for this one, because I don't know if I'm gonna have time to hit anything else, actually. So that's a thing. Actually, I actually might be able to hit this with a classic I'm reading for class. Um, uh, it could go either way right now, who knows. Honestly, I don't have like a, a lot of like sci-fi I wanna read. So. So I might end up reading the audiobook of The Invisible Man. I'm pretty sure it is like a, Pretty sure it is like a fast classic to read, so that'd be great. So next is The Mummy, and the way I'm hitting this is by reading a is by reading a book that is over 20 years old. And for that, I'm reading Beloved by Toni Morrison. I had to read this for a class, and technically we were starting to get into like the last week of the last week of September, but we are reading it during October for like the next week, so I'm counting it. But yeah, I've, no, I've never read this. All I know is that it follows it follows our main character who escapes from slavery, but you know, almost 20 years later, she's still not fully free because she has too many memories of her, like, of living at this place called Sweet Home. And now her new home is haunted by the ghost, the ghost of her baby, which, who died nameless. And the only thing on his tombstone is the word beloved. So obviously, um, that's it's gonna be a heavy read, but it's here and I'm reading it from a class. So I'm gonna count it anyway. So I have to read less for fun. So next is the Wolfman. And for that, the prompt I'm hitting this is to read a character that goes through a transformation. If that, I'm reading Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Mass. I'm reading to like finish this series off because I have two books left. This is one of them. So, in this one, we are following at Kale, who is like going on, going on his like own quest. So like what happens at the end of Empire of Storms, I think, um, Queen of Shadows, something like that. I know that he gets injured. He has to like go to this Southern continent so he can get healed. So, cause this is all about him. I'm sure he's going to go through his own little character arc. But sure, this is a book where he like falls in love, so he'll be transforming in a variety of ways, I'm sure. Bad news. This book is long as fuck and is like 800 pages long, I think. No, it's like 666 or 660. So still long as fuck, but um, manageable, hopefully. But we'll be finishing it then. So next is The Raven. And the way I'm hitting this prompt is to read a book with a black cover. So I'm reading The Night Wanderer by Drew Hayden Taylor. This is like the death, the death jacket for it. That's so very black, as you can see. So this book, I think, is this is like a fairly short gothic novel that follows our character Tiffany as she is kind of like interested in why there is like this creepy lodger staying that her father has taken in and thinks he's creepy. He sleeps in the day and is prowling at night. And so after meeting this stranger in the woods at night, we have a creepy encounter and stuff happens. What happens, I don't know, because it's pretty short. So, love that, love that for me. I've been to read this for a while now, so I can finally read that and it'll be great. Also, because my classics, one of my classes is not like focused on gothic literature 
is the same class that I'm reading Beloved for. So maybe I can like use this, use this in like a paper maybe. Who knows? Um, I'm hoping so, but not gonna get my hopes up. So yeah, the thing that, that I'm reading, um, I think the only problem that I'm like, the only way I'm like doubling up is with Suki Stackhouse because technically it's like a series of like 13 books. So I thought we'll probably be reading multiple books in October. So technically I'm not using the same book for like multiple prompts, which is how I'm getting through my little loophole. So great for me. Um, again, I mean, you can double up or like triple up. Um, you're not forced to use it like a different book for every prompt, but I want to, so I can like look more, so I can look more professional as like a co-host. Um, so yeah, uh, that's all from me. Again, I'll follow the readathon on Twitter and Instagram, which I'll have linked down below. Be sure to read our posts about the giveaway so you can like know how to enter it. Which again, I'm pretty sure all I have to do is post your TBR either on Instagram or on YouTube and tag us in it so we can see it. And that's about it. I also have linked down below the Twitter for my book club so you can join us for that. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you like the video, subscribe, like, share, all that. Hopefully I will see you next week.